We're going deeper into SharePoint search with this video. More specifically, we're covering managed properties. We're going to build on the things that we learned in our last video. So if you haven't seen that or you want a refresher, click up into this corner to watch that and then come back to this video. So let's get into it. We'll start here in the SharePoint Admin Center. I've logged in. We're going to go down to More Features and then click over on Search. And this will take us into the Search Admin Center. The very top option is what we want to click on, Manage Search Schema. This is where we actually see all the crawled properties and the managed properties that we talked a lot about in the last video. So it starts off on the managed properties and it's showing you all the managed properties that currently exist. As you look across the different columns here, you'll see the type of field, if it's a text, an integer, a yes, no, and you'll see a handful of different words here like query, search, retrieve, refine. These actually are the most important fields that we're gonna be talking about because in general, these are gonna be more important to to set than anything else. And they're gonna tell you a lot about how you could use these things. So let's go ahead and just create a new managed property and start looking at these. So you have two options when you create a new one. You have text and yes, no. You can't create an integer, you can't create a decimal, date, time, double precision, binary. And the reason why is because those already exist in what's called refinable properties. Those are special managed properties that are created automatically that you just start to use. So we'll cover that towards the end. So let's just create a test one here. I'll just call this one article name. So this is gonna store the name of an article. Now it's essentially the same thing as the title field, but I think this will help illustrate the point. Now looking down on the main characteristics, these are the most important options that are going to be set for this field. So the first one is searchable, which sounds incredibly vague. What this means, and you'll see it on the description here on the left, but this determines whether the words that are stored for this managed property are added to the full text index. So I'll map this to something like the title field. And as the crawler is running and it's indexing all of the items that have content in the title field, it's going to automatically populate this managed property with values as well. All of those values can get added to the full text index by a simple checkbox here. So what that means is you don't have to specify article name as a property when you're searching for content. You could just search for content and your search results would be returned that way. But you could also have other options enabled below. So the next one is queryable. This is kind of the opposite of the full text index where you can query this field directly. In the example, the author field, author uh, Smith. If you check this box, what it'll let you do is execute a search query for article name and then a particular value. So in addition to being able to use the full text index with this field, you could also, or instead of, just allow queries with this field. So you have two different ways right now to search for content using this managed property. One is specifying the property directly in the query. The other is to not specify the property at all and it just use the full text index. If both of these are checked, then either method will return search results based on this managed property. And we're gonna cover both of these different scenarios and a few others in a future video where we visualize what these things would look like if you're gonna search with these methods and when you would use these and when a regular user would use these. I know some users who will specify property names and others that just don't ever bother and they rely on the full text index. If you're understanding managed properties a bit better now, please click that like button. And I post videos like this once a week, so make sure you subscribe. Now, the next property is retrievable. This is a very different property than the last two. The last two are really about how can you find the search results you're looking for. With this property, if you check this, as part of the search results, you can get the value back that was stored in this property. So this is useful for things like the name of the article, the URL of the article, a description, maybe part of the body, any other field, the author, things that you might want to present on the search 
results page to the user. So think of what you would typically see on Google search results. What information is presented back to you? Name, URL, description, other types of metadata fields. This checkbox determines whether this data will come back with the rest of the search results. So if you don't need this field to be retrievable, you could just leave this blank. But if it's something that you would intend to display on like a search results page, you want retrievable checked. The next one is multiple values. So if allow multiple values is checked, you can have multiple crawled properties mapped to this one managed property. Again, we referenced this in the first video as well, how that could happen and why you would want that. And what will happen is it'll basically have an array here of the different values. So every time it crawls a document, if it comes across multiple crawled properties with data that all map to this same manus property, then it'll just have an array of all of the different values. Now you'd have to handle that if you are retrieving that and returning it on your search result page. So you would have to iterate over those options. It's something else that'll go hand in hand with this further down the page. Now the next one's refinable and sortable. These are two that you can't control because there's only certain fields, the refinable fields that I've mentioned earlier, that you can have this turned on for, and it's already turned on in those fields. But what this lets you do is add a refiner based on this field. For refiners, just think of the filters on the left of an Amazon search page. All the different ways you can narrow down your search results by price, by category, all those different types of fields, those are all called refiners. And then sortable is obviously whether you could sort on this field or not. So these are both enabled on refinable properties and we'll take a look at those afterwards. So alias is another field that you can specify if you want to be able to refer to this field by a different name. I don't use this a lot for a regular managed property, but for refiners, it's extremely common to use. So we'll address this when we look at the refinable properties. The rest of these really deal with tokenization, which is more about how the data that's saved to these managed properties, how it's broken out into words. The last item on the page is your actual mapping to crawled properties. So this is how you'll connect this to your crawled properties. And you have two options here. One is since you can add multiple mappings, you can tell it to use all of the content it finds for all of these crawled properties. So if you have 10 crawled properties, they all have data for a particular item, then all 10 of those will get mapped to this same crawled property. Or you could say to only use the first one that it finds that has data in it. So this is more of the example where you had multiple site owners that were creating an event content type. They were using different names for the start date. I think that was the example I had in the first video. So based on that, you would add all those variations of event dates and things like that as crawled properties here, and then just tell it to use the first one that it comes across. That way, this one managed property always has the correct date, no matter what column name was used. So to add a mapping, you just click on this button and you'll see all the different crawl properties here. It is not fun to scroll left and right through this because this is a very slow interface. So I would suggest searching for the property that you are trying to find. When you find it, you could just click on the OK button after selecting it and it'll get added to the mapping. Now let's go look at refinable properties. So you could find all of your refinable managed properties by just using the word refinable up here on the managed property screen. They're all pre-created. Uh, you can't currently add any more. All you can do is reuse these for other things. Uh, you do have pay some paging options here. So you have a, quite a number of these fields to use. And these are the other data types you couldn't select, the dates, integers, some of the strings. And you notice they all have refine and sort enabled. So those are the two properties that we couldn't enable otherwise. So let's just click on one of these. They all have generic names. Uh, that's why I said that the alias property was very useful for these. So most of these options are all grayed out and all you're really going to do on these is specify an alias to have a more friendly name to refer to and then you'll add your mappings here. 
everything else still applies you can add multiple mappings to this property you could reuse these for any number of things and as you build up more complex search interfaces these will come in handy a lot for your refiners for verticals for things like that now we've looked at creating a managed property from scratch we've looked at the refinable managed properties uh, the other thing i wanted to point out is that you don't have to create these from scratch uh, but it does depend on how you created your column to begin with. If you created a column directly on a list or library and didn't use a site column or a content type, then you'll have to create that yourself. Content types are what I would recommend you use just for the simplicity of already having the managed properties created. They're already called the same thing as your column name, and it'll mean you have less work to do after you're done on the actual site. And by the way, if you haven't done that, I've got a series of videos up in the top right corner that will walk you through the process.